there is not a way to do a constitutional photo ID law uh, with, without a cost. And again, uh, it's a pretty expensive price tag uh, to implement such a piece of legislation. We don't need a photo ID law. Uh, we don't have uh, tens of millions of dollars lying around to spend on uh, legislation that we don't need. Uh, so uh, there is no uh, proposal of uh, this type that puts this uh, burden on voters uh, that, that I can support. And I, I believe I, I speak for Representative Kurt on, on uh, this particular issue. I think there are a lot of issues uh, we are interested in, in addressing real problems. Uh, real solutions uh, in a bipartisan way, but uh, this is not one of them. If we're going to spend money, millions and millions of dollars, to improve the system, we should be investing in technology um, to make sure that we have the best, newest technology in all the counties so that the boards could do their work in the most efficient you know, fashion. Um, there are all sorts of uh, things we can be investing in that would be a productive improvement in the system. What about fingerprint scanners? Has anyone ever thought about that option? Uh, it's being used in other ID uh, situations. Uh, could that be something that would, once and for all, put an end to this? Because the fingerprints are kind of hard to disguise in another way, right? I'm not familiar with proposals like that for voting. I will say, and I think that this is a common kind of misconception when we talk about introducing uh, ID requirements, is that we have an ID requirement in Ohio. Uh, you already have to present uh, identification at the polls. I think that that law uh, generally is working. There's a few tweaks I'd make. Uh, for example, many states accept a college ID uh, when you go to the, the polls, but Ohio doesn't. So I think there's a few tweaks that could be made, but for the most part, we've had that law in place. It's not a stringent government issue photo ID, but it, there's a, a list of documents uh, that can be provided uh, by the voter. We have uh, a process in place, and you know I think that uh, that is working, and we don't uh, need to do something as extensive as a fingerprint, uh, or certainly not a photo ID requirement. I would, I would use a, a medical analogy. Uh, you know, if you have a little pain in your knee that can be solved with, uh, you know, aspirin, why would you have knee surgery? Um, you know, why would you have knee replacement surgery? You know, if, if the aspirin can take care of the problem. We don't have a voter problem in this state. Why do we spend millions of dollars um, making people jump over hoops to exercise a basic fundamental right that belongs to them? And not have government building barriers the exercise of that right. Um, if we had a documentable, you know, fraud problem, clearly the evidence showed you know, the problem we have to fix. It'd be a different discussion. So what do you think the motivation is? If there is no fraud problem, what is their motivation? Well, number one, we hope that these uh, bills won't move through the legislature. So we're out, we're being clear about our, our opposition and exactly what our concerns are. I think that the concerns uh, that exist out there are that this is a hyper-partisan tactic uh, to make it harder uh, for some groups uh, to vote. Uh, we'd like to prevent that from happening, so we're here to try to educate the public, educate all of you about what the problems are, but uh, if, if uh, our uh, friends on the other side of the aisle decide to continue uh, forward with these proposals, I think it's, it would be a tactic uh, by them to uh, make it harder for some Ohioans to vote. We're against that. Um, we do not need a photo ID provision for voting in Ohio. A few election cycles ago, unfortunately, Ohio was a poster child in the national media for contentious mud wrestling over voter requirements. Hopefully we're past that. We've had a couple of election cycles where we've not had to go through that, that mud fight. And I, I would say that most, if not all, the major newspapers in the state in the past couple of years have been editorialized. Thankfully that we haven't had those fights and that they have said repeatedly that if we're going to make fundamental changes in our election law or election machinery, they should be bipartisan. This is not the <coughs> partisan. The two 
parties should be able to work together in the interests of citizens exercising that fundamental right and not erecting barriers to it.